Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lisa Elvin Stoltari, and I'm a genealogist and a passionate traveler. For the last year or so, I've been working on a series called Les Filles du Roi, or The King's Daughters. Now I'm looking at um, Les Filles Marie, the marriageable girls. So if Les Filles du Roi are the founding mothers, Les Filles Marie are their grandmothers. So let's have a look at our Filles Marie and get to know the true pioneers of Quebec. But before we do, I want to just um, show you ways that you can support the channel. The first three keep you in the know. We have subscribe, we have like, and we have notify. All those three things help you um, stay up to date. The next three are ways to um, help the channel grow. We have coffee. Um, which is a one-time um, purchase. And then we have Etsy, my little channel, my little store. And then we have Patreon, which is a membership-based um, subscription. I have links to all of the um, above. And um, we, you know, I would appreciate any and all suggestions and help and all of that good stuff. So with that being said, let's get started and get to know our Fianari number eight. Now, those of you who are regular viewers to the Fille du Roi know that the program began in 1663. So the Fille Marie was an unorganized kind of pro. It wasn't even a program. It was just girls coming across. And these were girls that were sent by churches or by uh, different organizations. And they tended to come from, uh, you know, the period that they came was 1634 to 1662. Before 1634, we have really no real migration or migrations of um, other than families coming across. And it was a very small group uh, that are the true, true, true uh, settlers, the first settlers of Quebec. But 1634 marks uh, Quebec's, those of you who are familiar, uh, Quebec retook um, or France retook Quebec from England and had temporarily uh, been owned by England for a couple of years. And, um, and by 1634, they're back in the saddle and they're ready to really build a country. So 1634 to 1662 are the, is this period where we're, um, you know, really focusing in on those very brave and incredibly strong women who came across without other people. They sometimes would just come across on a boat with, you know, themselves and they would just have, uh, you know, the, the regular workers coming. And so they weren't accompanied by anyone. They, they were simply, uh, sometimes, sometimes they were. Um, certainly the early ones were not. So let's have a look at our Fia Marie and when she came across. Françoise Grenier has the honor of being the very first uh, woman that we believe came across in 1634. So she is the great, great, great grandmother of, of many, 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 many French Canadians. Um, and we'll get to know her in a, in a bit. Uh, Françoise Grenier is remarkable for many, many reasons. And I'm proud to say that I am one of her granddaughters. Um, this was one of the ones I really wanted to do early on. Other viewers have recommended it, but I always knew I was going to do Francoise because she was the first uh, to arrive and, and definitely begin uh, the process of creating a country. So let's get to know Francoise a little bit better. So unfortunately, we do not have any information about Francoise other than she is from France. Um, it is highly likely that she came from Nouvelle Aquitaine, that she was um, from La Rochelle. You know, it's highly likely all of those things, but we don't have any proof. Anyone who has any information about Francoise Garnier, please post in the notes below. I would love to, um, to share that with all the viewers. So um, we just know that she is from France. So what we know of Françoise is that she came across in 1634 with Robert Guivard's ship, uh, who was bringing um, across some prospective settlers, and they arrived um, in uh, Quebec on the 24th of June, 1634. Those of you who are familiar with um, Quebec know how important uh, and how symbolic uh, this arrival is. Uh, the 24th of June is the La Fête de Saint Jean Baptiste, the John the Baptist um, birthday celebration, and it is a, a national holiday in Quebec. 
and uh, all, you know, everything is closed and lots and lots. It's kind of our freedom uh, day, if you will, and our celebration of the culture of Quebec. So it's, it has nothing to do with the fact that she arrived on the 24th of June. It's just very symbolic that she did. The groom that she would eventually marry, his name was Noel Langua, and he was born about 1603 in, in the, um, a commune called saint leonard des barques His parents were Guillaume Langua and Jeanne Millet. And so you can see that he is from Normandy, where many, many, many uh, early settlers were from. And he's from the région, or the département, I would say, of Orne. Um, and uh, as of 2019, there were only 77 people who lived in saint leonard des Bac. The church, saint leonard is pictured here um, and has existed since the 17th century. However, where Noel would have been baptized could, could not have, ex probably was there, but it was an earlier church. Um, but this is probably where it um, originates. Um, and so, uh, and I, I was able to find a little picture that says saint leonard des Parc, or the, early, the top picture tells you kind of like the, the road map, if you will. Uh, but this is Noël Langlois, who is extremely famous in Quebec. And it's a very, very um, popular name, as you can imagine. So as it happens, Noël was on that ship, that same ship uh, that Françoise was on. Did they know each other? Did they... I have no idea, you know, but one has to expect, you know, suppose that they might have met up on the ship and decided this was this was it. Or maybe they knew each other before. We don't know. You can have all kinds of, you know, of uh, romance um, possibilities in there. But and we do not have any record of their marriage. We, we believe it took place shortly after the ship. And so that would, you know, kind of give us a clue that they had met before. Um, and, um, or they met, you know, as they disembarked on the ship, you know, and so they were married in 1634. Where did they settle? So the family would settle at Beauport. Beauport was owned um, by Robert Guivard, the same man who had um, brought the ship across in, and he got the seigneurie uh, in 1634. Um, and he got it from the Compagnie des Sans Associés, the 100 uh, Associates Company. Um, and this was a um, really beautiful place, as you can imagine, the beautiful port. Um, so you can see it on the map right there, how close it is to Quebec, it's just up north. It became part of Quebec City eventually. Um, then in the middle, we have just kind of an artist depiction of what Beauport would have looked like at that time. And one of the most important maps I found was the map of in, from 1663 that lays out all the owners of the different uh, plots of land. And there we have Noel Langlois. He's right in the middle of that red section. That is his land. Um, so you can see it stretches from it. And, and all of the, uh, you know, the land uh, was it, most of it was in a linear fashion. So his was right in the middle there. Very, um, very beautiful piece of land, I'm certain. Um, and on the bottom, we have the picture of Beauport, as you can see it from actually, this is a picture taken from Ile d'Orléans to, and they, they took it um, off the shore. So this is a picture taken of Beauport from Ile d'Orléans. So you can really clearly see how beautiful that uh, place. I believe it is among the top 10 uh, beautiful uh, towns of Quebec. So, um, Definitely going to be visiting that when I visit Quebec uh, with my camera and, and, you know, and filming all of this for YouTube. So they would go on to have 10 children. Their firstborn, Robert, tragically died uh, and drowned at 19. Marie would die in infancy and would marry Jean Pelletier um, and would have nine children, seven of whom would make it. Marguerite would marry Paul Vachon and have 12 children, 10 of whom would make it. Jean would marry Marie-Charlotte Bélanger and have 12 children, eight of whom would make it. Jeanne would marry René Chevalier and have eight children, six of whom would make it. Elisabeth would marry Louis Côté and have three children, one of whom would make it. And then she would marry Guillaume Lemieux and have 11 children, eight of whom made it. 
Marie would marry François Miville and had 12 children, 10 of whom would make it. Jean would marry Marie Cadieux and have seven children, five of whom would make it. Noël would marry Annie, Annie Caron and have five children, two of whom would make it. And then he would marry Geneviève Ferrand and have four children, all of whom would make it. So you can begin to see the descendancy of this amazing couple, how strong they were and how many children they had. So um, let us continue exploring their lives. So tra tragically, Francoise would pass away in November 1st, 1665. We're not sure of how old she was. We assume that she was in her late 50s. Um, it is extremely possible that she died of the epidemic that was um, part of that part of New France, and there was a, an epidemic at that time. Um, and she died in hospital and was buried immediately. Again, signifying that she possibly was uh, part of that epidemic. That is the, you know, what they did, they would bury them. Uh, and she is buried at um, the Côte de la Montagne Cemetery in Quebec City, which is pictured above. Um, and they had made um, a will the day before indicating possibly that uh, she knew she was dying. So um, very, very tragic and early death, even for that time um, for Françoise. They would have been married um, presumably, uh, you know, 30 years by then, um, and would have been married, you know, 16, yeah, 30, about 30 years. Um, and just a very, very sad ending, much too soon, much too soon. Well, Noel would go on to find a new love a year later with Marie Crevet, who is a widow of Robert Caron. Um, and they kind of merged their families. You can find them on the 1667 census, uh, where a couple of his children, one of her daughters, and some, um, you know, probably day laborers were living. You can also note that he had 60 arpents à valeur as of the 1667 census. So he was an important landowner um, in that area. And um, in 1681, they're both still alive. Noel by then is 78, Marie uh, is 71. And um, let us see, you know, how the end of their lives, um, you know, works out. Noel would, um, would live on until 1684, dying on July 14th. Um, at the approximate age of 81. He would have spent the last year of his life confined to bed, uh, really not well. Uh, but to have made it to that age uh, during that period represented extremely how strong his body was, how strong he was. So I'm proud to call him my grandfather as well. Um, and uh, his widow would live on until um, she would live on a very long life, dying in 1695. So um, very, very hardy stock this comes from. As you can well imagine with this founding family, um, they have a beautiful website, uh, the Langlois d'Amérique. Uh, and I have posted the website. I was, I went into their website and was just transfixed. It was really well done, really well done. So have a look at that and see if that is something that you would um, enjoy joining. So as always, love to give you the resources. We have a couple of, um, you know, websites where you pay. Quebec Genealogical E-Society is, I think, about $50 or $60 a year. So it's really, really uh, inexpensive. Uh, we have Genealogy Quebec, which is a little bit more expensive per month. But if you're doing hardcore research, you absolutely need that. And then we have um, a free website called um, the French Canadian Genealogist, which is a recent addition to my kind of litany of, uh, of resources. I've been going to this website more and more. Um, just amazing resources, amazingly well documented. They tell the story so well. So have a look at that. Then we have Généalogie du Québec d'Amérique Française, or otherwise known as Nous Origines, a free website. Absolutely kind of a think tank of it. Maple Stars and Stripes podcast. You've got to go and check this out. Sandra Goodwin is an idol of mine. She's just phenomenal. And her work uh, to promote French-Canadian um, genealogy has been... Uh, 
just some inspiration. And then we have some fa some um, societies that are important uh, if you are. Um, you know, focused on French Canadian genealogy. Uh, we have the Quebec Family History Society, which is very important, is based out of Quebec as well. And then we have the French Canadian Society of Michigan. Wonderful, wonderful web. I belong to um, all, almost all of these. And then um, we have um, the American Canadian Genealogical Society. And then we have the um, we also have the American French Genealogical Society of Rhode Island, uh, which is really an amazing website. I, I can't wait to go to Rhode Island actually and look at their library and I, I see it and I kind of, you know, I start salivating and just kind of going, oh, I've got to go there. So this is on my bucket list. So these are all resources. Please send me any and all uh, resources that you uh, feel are, are really, really focused on Quebec historical genealogical um, research. And so ends episode eight of Françoise Grenier. I have to say, this is she's such an inspiration. Um, they were married 31 years. Um, despite the fact she did not live a particularly long, I mean, fairly long for the, for the time, um, the amount of descendants that this couple produced are just astonishing. 1,388 as of 1729. Now they did get an early start, but as you can clearly see by their amount of um, children and their children's children, um, just phenomenal, phenomenal um, roots in Quebec. I am certain that a lot of you are related to this amazing couple, really the first family of that new generation of the founding families of Quebec. So 1,388 as of 1729. I wonder how many of you are related to this couple. I know I am, and uh, I know the viewers that have requested her uh, as well. So please let me know if you are related to this amazing woman. And we thank her, we bless her memory, and we are so grateful that she came to our shores. And for that, we will always be thankful. Until I see you again on episode nine, au revoir.